Welcome back one and all to part 9 of Dragon Force 2 Easy Mo Edition. And we're not wasting any time right off the bat, we're storming a fort. And nobody here but old Sharon. Sounds like an old band, doesn't it? Hmm, a band of one, sadly. Well, if you don't include our 20 monks who will probably not last too long. We're not in the best of conditions, but we've got more than enough to get the job done. And to prove that, I'm going to send Bart's out. You know, the man with no offensive capabilities. I mean, in terms of spells and magic. Quite a fighter himself. All right, Topaz's battle track. I forgot about this. I haven't heard this in a little while. Really like their backdrop there. Especially those pillars. Very, very pleasant architecture. Hope we don't damage it along the way. I'm gonna try to preserve this culture. This is history in the making here. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm really glad we saved his arm doubler right about now. Because I think with that, he's gonna be able to take care of this solo. Yes, indeed. Even though he's close to half health. This business is quite risky, but if you're willing to venture forth with me, just didn't want to talk over Bart's there. He's got a pretty cool voice, so you know me. I like to preserve all the audio. <laughs> Fight me. Prepare yourself. Hmm. She's not doing any critical attacks. I'm very surprised. The monks in this game are renowned for that. But it wasn't enough. I guess uh, the sight of Bart's instilled her with so much fear, she couldn't really exercise her full strength. Because not only do they crit a lot, but it'll be like three attacks in a row. And this isn't like Dragon Force 1. You won't see Commander spamming. Ooh, he learned Deep Black. Would rather have an offensive spell, but that works. You'll see commanders in Dragon Force 1 spam like six to eight attacks in a row on occasion. And it's not as rare as you would expect something like that to be. Because it's quite ludicrous. But it happens. This game is much more fair. It does still feel like it cheats sometimes. Because you know. But I've never seen a commander attack more than three times in a row. Maybe four times actually, but I'm pretty sure I've never seen them go past four times in a row, which is a lot, but comparatively speaking, yeah, it's really no contest. And most generals in this game only crit twice in a row, so much easier to deal with. You know, when the odds are stacked against you, which they kind of were that time, so in any event, the point is arm doubler is super duper OP. Can I have it for my whole team? No, okay. Well, that just makes Bars all the more special. Again, Kanshin has it too. Kanshin. Kanshin. Not really sure how I want to say that. I want to try to be trying to be accurate here. I was going to use him, but we're just at the point of the game where we're not that far into it, but we're just far enough to where I have a nice stable of strong generals. And at this point it's gonna to be tougher to it's going to be tougher to... Oh, hold on. Let me get come back to that thought. You see uh, that independent nation I highlighted there? That's going to be our next stop because they're kind of blocking us from that dragon man that we heard about a little while ago. If you recall, I forgot for a moment, but I do remember. So we're going to go ahead and round him up very quickly if we can. Except I don't know how quick it's going to be. But we're going to do all of that before we engage Topaz. And I actually don't remember what happens when we do that. You would think since they've already kind of hit it off, there wouldn't be a fight between Shin and Kaede. But in the off chance there is, considering how many people are in his castle, I'm going to send a strong division that way, headed by our Empress herself. So 
I'm going to have to get some people together, decide who's going to be on what team. Of course, make sure everybody's at full troops this time. Ricardo. <laughs> that was my blunder. I take full responsibility. But again, another good thing about this game is troops are far less likely to desert you. I mean, you have to really get on their bad side and work at it for them to want to ditch you. And even then, there's only a few generals in this game, it seems, who are predisposed to doing that, even in the worst of conditions. I've played every kingdom in this game, that's eight total, some more than once, and across all these playthroughs, I've only had one officer desert me. And it's always the same one, too. So I think he's just hardwired to be discontented. And it's not someone you would think like a bandit. No, no, no. It was a mage, somebody who you get near the end of the game, somebody who a lot of characters might actually miss out on. But we're not missing out on Mira, and we got a centaur crest. This early, fantastic. And we got another robot soldier, Gahak. Gahak. Akum. I have to do that joke every time I see his name. Well, you're not the best, but... Could she be more graphic? Ooh, cold X. It would be quieter, that's for sure. Quit piggybacking off me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. This is very true. And we're back to square one. <laughs> oh, cold. Oh, even Fuji. Brutal. Katsuke, they've got your number. Hard. Could you be any more open of a book? Everybody's checked you out, huh? Alright, we haven't done this in a while. We're just chit-chatting with people and ooh, Ayame actually prefers Kaede. Scandal. <laughs> watch out, Avris. And Dora, watch out for Albrecht. Seems like everybody's smitten for someone. Not Esteban, though, and why am I talking to Enzo? No offense. We just want to highlight particular people we're using. And if I ever get around to getting some good materials, I will forge him a decent claw. Yeah, you didn't lose to Annette, by the way, so... Here's the saying what you mean. Oh yeah, Schneider is not going to say anything interesting because he's not really happy yet. He's just content. He's not displeased by our presence, I'll say. And again, Fujimaru, as before, kind of hinting how he really feels. And did Florin mention Garcia? I need to check that out again. Name drop. I'll never forgive Garcia. 
Garcia is a beast man who I really, he's one of the few characters in this game I just genuinely do not like. Because he just, he's a, he seems like a legitimate jerk. And it's funny, he seems like one of the characters that can die. Like he's one of the few characters if they died I wouldn't care at all, but he always gets captured so. Isn't that how it goes? The real bastards are the ones who always seem to make it out unscathed, but they get their comeuppance eventually. We might not be around to see it, but there's no getting around karma. The good news is I think Garcia is actually with Robotegi, who's on the way to that Dragon Man. So, Florin, this is your opportunity. Avenge your husband's death. Yeah, we're going to play along and say that she actually did have a husband. We're going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Now, tough decision. We're going to give the Centaurs to Giovanni only because I've already given Megumi an alternative troop type. And she's... A decent level right now she really doesn't need them if he hadn't joined it definitely would have went to her though and we're not using him just yet so I'm gonna hold off definitely more harpies there being pretty useful and we don't have any other flying units yet I think so they're still a hot commodity for the time being by the end of this that'll probably will have changed because we'll have seen some more advanced flying units who unfortunately outshine them in just about every way But for now, they're the bee's knees. And what an odd saying. Where did that even come from? You ever look at some of the English language sayings that we have? Anecdotes and phrases and axioms that have been passed down. It's some really strange stuff when you really look at it. Like, how did that come about? And I'm sure in the context of when it was originally written or said, it made sense or was clever. But I don't know, in 2016, present day? It, it just doesn't all fly. And hopefully that wasn't too disorienting. We did a little jump cut to save you some more turns. Some more uh, shuffling of forces. And ooh, we're finally getting some good stuff consistently. Builder's Tome, Power Crystal, another Power Crystal. Slow but sure, we're going to hopefully accumulate enough items to begin forging some materials. Definitely want to give Kaede a better katana. And beyond that, just the usual MP boosting stuff for those who can equip it. We don't really have enough right now. I do remember that you need iron for katana weapons. Iron and I think thunder crystal is very good too, so. Now some of our premier builders include Ricardo, Eva, Gonzalez, and Shigure. I do remember across multiple playthroughs, they tend to have the highest build. Oh, and Gangas as well. He's probably the best out of the rulers. I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Shigure though, because he's gonna be moving around the map a lot, so he's gonna help to fortify a lot of castles where we need them. And that was very useful to find that divine role because we're about to get some use out of Ron Pao, I think. So that boosts his MP, among other things. He's going to be my secret weapon, my last resort, if everyone else can't get the job done in these fights, he's just going to blast them into oblivion. But not in a very fatal way, so it's okay. Again, we're not that kind of nation. And Kansuke still chirping there, squawking at us, trying to tell us where to go, what to do. But we're rebellious in our youth, so we refuse. And instead, we're going to pick a fight with this free nation. And first up to bat is Garcia. Ah, thank you, Florn. <laughs> She'll make him repent. And his little bro's enemy. Who's his brother, I wonder? Hmm. Well, I know he's not related to Marcus because those two don't get along at all. I've seen that before. Perhaps Esteban? Isaac? I don't know. Yeah, who cares? It's Garcia. Let's just get rid of him. The only thing I like about Garcia is his name. That's the only thing he's got going for him. And it's going to take a minute for the action to kick off. So we're going to spread out. Going to focus on him, I think. He doesn't have many troops, so why waste our time focusing on them? 
besides beasts are actually good against archers and soldiers, so... Yeah. Let's just avoid them. Florn can handle that. She'll take a little bit of damage, though. Beasts are pretty good at dealing damage to the generals, so... But there's only ten of them. Excuse me, it's only six of them. It's only five, it's only four. Oh, they're fading fast. It was all a mirage the whole time. Well, Garcia, what can I really say? At times like this, I can't help but feel like there is such a thing as retribution. You've been a horrible, horrible man. You've done some very, very despicable things, and I can't help but feel like everything coming your way right now, you've earned it. So, we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing. See if he wants to run away. I'm gonna save her spell just in the off chance he's feeling a little bold. Sticking around, get his energy in the red. Danger zone, and then we can wrap things up very nice and briskly. Oh, but look at the clock. We're not going to have that opportunity. Unfortunately. And he lives to snarl another day. And the sight of her husband's murder fills Florn with determination. What the hell did you have to do with the husband's death, Garcia? Come on now. We can't hear you. Oh, now we really can't hear you. Don't tease us. See, he's being all dramatic. I can rest in peace finally, but he's he's not going anywhere. Except the nearest cell. And I'll make sure we put him in the most dank one available. And I'm not talking about drugs. Get your mind out of that zone. We're keeping this drug free, thank you very much. Keeping it clean. We're only high off of one thing, and that's life. <sighs> Just breathe that clean air with me. You know what's a testament to how amazing life is? I mean, with all the toxins and pollutants and chemicals that we know we've unfortunately exposed ourselves in the environment to, the fact that we can even still breathe and enjoy any measure of good health, I mean, it's a testament to how powerful this is, isn't it? I mean, life is a beautiful thing. Wouldn't you agree, Giovanni? <sighs> some some days you just you just happy to be a part of it, you know. Even on the battlefield. But regardless, let's shake things up a bit. Cross Slash, a uh, fan favorite from the first Dragon Force. Looks a little different. It has the added benefit of attacking troops as well as any officer in this one, so. And it's quite powerful depending on who's using it. I think it relies a bit on the general's base strength. Because it does seem like the stronger generals do more damage with it. And also depends on who they're attacking to. Some generals are going to be more susceptible to magic attacks, others, physical attacks. Robotegi. I'm pegging him as being weak to... Physical blows. And again, you know me, didn't want to speak over Giovanni. I want you to hear everybody. Everyone. No. Oh, Ropategi. Fond memories of him in my Bart's playthrough. Really turned out to be quite exemplary. And he will continue to be so. I'm not going to use him this time to fight, but he's going to be great for finding items. Very high intelligence. And he does his portrait. It looks like he was designed by Toriyama, doesn't it? You know, the guy behind Dragon Ball. He's just got that facial curvature to him. And possibly the hair, but it's kind of hard to tell with the hood. Anyway, now we have a path cleared to Furo Village. Where awaiting us will be a not-so-secret, but hidden, playable character. 
And just checking on Topaz there. Not going anywhere. That voice. あの姿、間違いない。伝説のリュウ族じゃ。いかにも我はリュウ族だが、何のようだ。昨今の魔族の反乱、ご存知ですかああ、噂には聞いている。かなり暴れているようだな。いつもおや、レジェンド大陸の
Okay, that's better than one. Because I was thinking to myself, if he's got one HP. <laughs> Nothing ruffles my feathers more, let me tell you. But he was kind. In a very condescending way. All right, she's out of magic, so we're gonna have to use the troops. And the pikemen can stay behind. If only they could throw their spears, wouldn't that be wonderful? Another idea for a hypothetical Dragon Force 3. Troops could employ their weapons in a variety of ways. Maybe they could have tomahawks they could attack up close with or throw, same for spears. Because they already kind of did that in this game with the generals, the archer generals like Kiri, they can attack with a up close melee weapon or from a distance with arrows. So, very nice touch. And Kinsera has been captured. And he's satisfied. He's just in it for the fight. You know, it's one of those types. A warrior's warrior. Naturally, Kiri got a level up out of that, seeing as he was, what, level 15? Most characters in this game will learn their last ability at either level 10, 15, or 20, depending on how advanced they are. Well, I think that's about it for now. Please join me next time where we formally address Topaz. Till then, take care. See you soon.